In today's episode, we'll take a closer look at the most commonly made mistakes which can be the cause of a recurring issue of nails cracking along the stress line. You'll find out what to avoid and what to pay attention to in order to secure the side edges of extended nails and protect them from damage. Hi, my name is Connie, and this is a channel dedicated to the art of nail styling. Today, we'll focus on the issue of cracking nails. We'll show you our tips and tricks on how to deal with such situations. Let's go. The products and tools in this episode are a 100 to 180 grip file, the cupcake brush, wooden sticks, indigo cuticle number nine bit, indigo cuticle number one bit, a 180 to 220 grit buffer, cleaner number one in its new packaging, perfect base, indigo two-in-one gel brush number six, purple forms, form scissors, wipe off cleaner, easy shape in milky pink, and lint-free pads. I bet there isn't a single stylist out there who never had a client come back to them with a broken or chipped nail, especially in the stress zone. Of course, there are things we have no control over. We can't protect our clients from a fall or other mechanical damages, but it is our duty to create the most durable manicure of all, and only proper architecture and knowledge of technical nail construction can guarantee that. Let's have a look at what's worth paying attention to and what situations to avoid, like the plague, to present our clients with the most durable styling of all, hypothetically speaking, of course. To do an extension on the nail, we have to start by shortening the free edge. Mistake number one, an incorrectly shortened free edge. A free edge that is not fully shortened prevents a proper application of the form which in turn leads to incorrect distribution of product and can result in ridges and uneven areas forming on the surface of the nail. Therefore, we need to ensure the edge has been shortened as much as possible and dust the nail off with a soft brush. We detach the cuticles from the nail plate using the side of the wooden stick's slanted edge. We work using push and open motions. We work on the cuticles using an e-file. We drive the cuticle indigo number nine bit at a 90 degree angle to the cuticles at seven to 8,000 rotations per minute. We dust it off, then reach for the indigo cuticle number one bit. We work from the center to the left and from the center to the right, keeping the e-file at the same speed, remembering to change the rotation direction depending on which side we're working on. The rotation direction should always be the opposite of our movements. Then we mat the surface with a 180 grit buffer, working with the rounded side towards the cuticles. We dehydrate the plate using cleaner number one, apply acid-free primer and do a base coat rub. Mistake number two, skipping the base rub stage. Placing a large amount of base product directly on the nail can lead to the creation of air pockets and cracks, which is exactly what we're trying to avoid. Once the rub is done, we spread the base coat evenly across the nail and cure it in the lamp for 60 seconds. We'll remove the cuticles once the gel is shaped and filed. Time to prepare the form. As the glue on the form is quite strong and often sticks to our gloves, we don't unpeel the form just yet, but start by cutting it to size. We cut out the inner circle, then roll the form and fit it onto the nail. We'll be building a salon almond, which is why the form should be pointing slightly downwards. Mistake number three, incorrectly fitted form. If the form doesn't sit snugly against the natural nail's shape, some gel could escape underneath it. And when filing, we might reach an area that doesn't have enough gel and overfar the edge. And that's just a small step away from a crack. Remember to always cut the form down to perfectly fit the natural nail. We roll the form and place it against the nail. If we see that it fits well, we stick it down. We must ensure that the wings stick together evenly. Mistake number four, unevenly stuck form. If the form is stuck down wonky, the tunnel build on it will not be symmetrical. Product placed on such a nail can spread unevenly and where there is not enough product, it will be prone to breakages. We want to extend up to number three on the form, so we pinch it three spots further at number six. We can see the form is tilting upwards, so we want to redirect it a little bit down. To achieve this, we create side incisions at a 45 degree angle to the last horizontal line and cut out small triangles. We detach the top wings and direct the form down. 
we check if the center axis of the finger aligns with that of the form. If it doesn't, we detach the form at the ridge, flatten it, and fit it again. The form should rest on the sides where the natural nail grows out of the fingertip. This way, the gel won't be able to escape under the nail, and we won't have to risk overfining the underside. Is it all very obvious? Well, maybe so. But, as you can see, many mistakes that lead to cracked nails come from a lack of attention to detail or trying to cut corners. So, let me repeat it once again. All of the elements that make up the preparation of the nail plate and the preparation of the forms serve a purpose and lead to a durable styling. They form the foundation on which we can create safe and durable nails for our clients. Mistake number five, too thin a frame. We'll build the frame using Easy Shape Gel in Milky Pink. It's important that it's not too thin as this will increase the risk of breakages. We start the build from the desired length from number three towards the free edge, creating a shape of an almond. Mistake number six, creating an edge at an angle. It's important that the edge is driven straight and not at an angle. This allows us to protect the stress point. We keep a half mil margin below the white line, thanks to which we have a secured edge and don't have to worry about overfiling it. We even out the ridge in the joint with gel, dragging the brush in long strokes up, down, up, down then cure in the lamp for 30 seconds. We detach the form from both sides. We grab the upper wings, pinch them underneath and drag them down. We spread a slip layer across the whole nail, then pick up a ball of product. The portion can't be too small or too big. If needed, we can add a bit more product in the apex area. Mistake number seven, energetic movements. Chaotic movements may lead to the creation of an uneven surface of the nail. If the product is not distributed evenly, if some areas have too much and some too little, the center of gravity doesn't sit at the apex and the nail, working like a lever, can snap at the stress point. Mistake number eight, incorrect overlay. An overly flat nail without a proper defined apex also increases the risk of breakage. Remember that most of the material, about two thirds, should sit on the nail plate and only one third on the extended part. If there is too much product on the tip of the nail, it will become heavy, which can lead to cracks. How to create a perfect overlay? We start from an ice rink. That is the slip layer, which we apply to the entire length of the nail. Then we distribute the product in the apex area. Using pulsing motions, we move towards the cuticles and using small movements, we drag the gel towards the tip. The apex needs to be visibly defined and from there, the nail should fall gradually all the way to the free edge. We move the brush as if painting a smile slowly dragging the product down. The stress point should also have plenty of product. We even out the surface of the gel with the tip of the brush, driving it at a 90 degree angle. Mistake number nine, not enough product in the stress areas. The most important thing to remember is to check that the stress points have enough product. If there's not enough material there, it can lead to transparencies and be prone to overfining. We cure the overlaid nail in the lamp for 60 seconds, then wipe the surface with wipe off cleaner. The product distribution is behind us. Now we move on to filing and here lurks a few more mistakes which can lead to a nail styling disaster. Let's take a closer look. Mistake number 10, starting to file from the side edges. It's best to leave the edges to last once the whole surface has been shaped. First, we shorten the nail using rounded file motions, then we file the side walls. The file should be resting on the wall and not be tilted over the edge. Remember that we're only working on the extended edges. We work from the edge towards the middle of the nail, shaping the extension into an almond. First, we drive the edges straight out and then round them towards the tip. Mistake number 11, over filing the growth points. Be careful not to over file the growth points while filing. Two to three round motions should be enough. We work from the apex using the round side of the file from one side and then the other. We smooth the surface by the cuticles. We work on it gently using short strokes so as not to pick up too much product from the stress points. The less fast, chaotic movements, the better. Mistake number 12, filing at an angle. 
we drive the file along the middle axis of the finger, not at an angle. We make short movements, drive the edges straight along the edge of the natural nail and only round them towards the tip. This plays a crucial role when the nails grow out. Thanks to well-extended edges, the extension remains in line with the natural nail plate as it grows out. To finish off, we check the amount of product on both sides, ensuring that the edges are symmetrical. If something doesn't line up, we correct it. We flip our client's hand towards us and even out the shape. As our client's fingertips are on different levels, they are not our point of reference. The finger's central axis is. We mat the surface using a 220 grit buffer and thoroughly dehydrate the surface, including the underside. And we're done. We can see how beautifully the edges of our nail are protected. To sum up our episode, we've managed to highlight 12 elements where each one has a direct correlation to the durability of the styling and it's resistant to breakage. These 12 elements, this multi-stage work pattern is not just art for art's sake, but a well thought out system which guarantees the best possible outcome. So is it ever worth cutting corners? Well, it also depends on where these corners are and in which aspect, but when it comes to safety and nail construction, definitely not. It's worth learning from the mistakes of others, those who've been in nail styling for a long time, so as not to repeat their errors and be wiser thanks to their insights. This is the end of our episode. Let us know in those comments below if you found any mistakes amongst the 12 that you're guilty of and if our episode inspired you to change. Thank you for being here with us. See you next Wednesday.